We're going to break away from live now, bring you our news here at 5 o'clock, and we begin with breaking news. As you've seen out of New York City, former President Donald Trump has been found guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records. This, of course, a historic moment. Trump has just become the first former president in U.S. history to be convicted of felony crimes. Our Tim Blotz is in the live center, and Tim, this was a pretty big moment today. This is a big moment. The headline now shouts Donald Trump is a convicted felon. The jury finds him guilty in all 34 indictments. The verdict coming from the 12-member jury is unanimous. Now, the Associated Press reports that Mr. Trump sat stone-faced and looking down as all all 34 guilty verdicts were read by the justice, Juan Merchant. Now, the indictment all related to Trump's attempts to conceal payments made to prevent stories of affairs from going public. 11 of the charges related to phony invoices, another 11 related to checks written by Mr. Trump to his former attorney, and 12 counts related to ledger entries on his own book. Now, the president emerged from the courtroom calling the trial a sham. It was great. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. But the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. Well, the former president is now convicted of Class E felonies, which is the lowest classification in New York law. Each count carries a penalty of up to four years in prison. Sentencing is set for July 11th, and Mr. Trump said this is not the end. He's widely expected to appeal, which could drag this out until well after the November elections. Kelsey? All right, thanks, Tim. We want to bring in political analyst David Schultz for more insight on this. First, David, I'd like to just get your reaction to 34 guilty counts, criminal charges. Uh, reaction to that uh, before we get into too much analysis of it. Sure, sure. I always viewed it, if there was going to be a verdict, it was going to be all or nothing. And the reason why I say that is that all 34 counts are basically repetitions of the same thing. False entries um, or false bookkeeping. Um, a variation of that so so no surprise on an all or nothing in terms of that uh, and and I think what we should need to be thinking about now and is the next step what's going to happen now and you pointed out that the sentencing is going to occur in July but what's going to happen between now and July and it's typical in New York as well as in Minnesota he's going to have to now meet with a probation officer and they're going to put together what's called a pre-sentencing investigation or pre-sentencing report they're going to interview Trump interview his background and make a recommendation to the judge and given the fact you know that that what he committed was not a violent crime it's highly unlikely that he's going to see prison or jail time it's going to probably be some variation of probation and so forth but but going into that I'm um, going into that you now what we're looking at is normally somebody who's been convicted at this point would under similar charges would probably have their passport lifted um, they would face restrictions in terms of mobility in terms of travel and now we have to think about from not just a legal perspective but from a political perspective how do we reconcile all that with the fact that he's a major candidate for president of the United States so these are the kind of questions that are occurring in my mind as I'm thinking about it in terms of how we play this out politically and how we play this out legally in terms of uh, of, of what's going to happen for the next few months. And also, David, this isn't the only criminal case. There's a classified documents case, there's election interference, and then the Supreme Court in June is supposed to take up whether or not he gets immunity, too. So there's so much at play. You're absolutely correct at this point. I mean, many people were thinking that he could possibly face four different criminal trials, a total of what, at the end of the day, 86 in, in, um, criminal charges. It's still not clear if he's going to face those other three other three charges, but we're going to start to find out pretty soon because there is still a possibility that he could face um, the trial, at least in Georgia, which is in election interference there depending on what the Supreme Court says um, in later later in June it's a possibility that we could be in the early stages of pretrial motions and so forth for the January 6th one and the same thing it's still a possibility of for the Florida documents case but what, what we have here though um, is, is is one verdict that's in and it's a significant because 
what we have polling data suggesting is that among undecided voters, those who are truly undecided, um, a guilty verdict would could affect up to 50 percent of them in terms of their decision to support Donald Trump or not. What we don't know is whether or not that means they're going to gravitate over to Joe Biden. Are they going to stay home on Election Day? Or are they going to consider a possibility such as RFK Jr.? So this is how a lot plays out. The other thing I want to throw in here is that at this point, Donald Trump is a convicted felon, treated as a convicted felon under New York state law, which means now a lot of decisions that are going to be affecting him in terms of, of again, mobility issues and so forth come under his probation mm -hmm. officer um, in, in the city of New York, in Manhattan Borough. So it's going to be interesting to see also how uh, how much leverage, and people haven't thought about before, how much leverage a probation officer is now going to have over a major presidential candidate. David, uh, as a political analyst, um, Donald Trump is a bit of an enigma as a candidate, as Correct. you know. So. Um, a lot has been said about how something like this or any of these cases moving forward really affect him as an individual, a political candidate running for president. Um, what is your viewpoint of that? I mean, we know that in past situations he's actually raised more money Correct. when he's been in this type of limelight. Um, this is a little different situation, but do you see him hurt by this politically? His base, as you point out, probably not. But overall, do you see it hurting him in a dramatic way? I see him hurting him. The question becomes how dramatic. So first, in terms of his base, I think I've seen polling saying that 88% of his supporters said that if he is convicted, it's not going to change their mind. Essentially, it's not going to affect his base. What it becomes a question of is does it motivate his base even more? Will they um, give more money? Will, will it push more people who are likely Trump voters out to vote, that becomes a question. Again, if we think about the presidential race here in terms of, again, it's about maybe five or six swing states, you know, like the Arizonas, the Wisconsins, the Michigans, and so forth of the world. And within those six states, about 150,000 voters. How does this affect those few undecided voters who I think are going to truly decide the election? And this is where I think it hurts him, possibly hurts him. Um, but we have to think about the fact that, what, what are we now? Still, what, five months away from the election? Uh, five months is a political eternity at this point. By the time we get to, let's say, the end of September in Minnesota, when early voting starts, and across the country, early voting starts for many states, will this factor large among the swing voters? Or will they say, yeah, he's, he's guilty of a felony. However, I'm still concerned about inflation. I'm still concerned about the economy. I'm concerned about Gaza. That, that affects my decision even more mm -hmm. in terms of my choice about Joe Biden. That, I think, becomes a really good question here. But if we think about the impact here, remember, it doesn't have to be dramatic impact. It just has to be small impact on a small number of voters, really, that, that affect the election. Yeah, the latest poll had them two points apart with former President Trump in the lead. So that's a pretty small margin. Uh, although you point out there's a lot of time between now and then. So we appreciate your right. insight, David, as always. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Yeah. Bye, David. Well,